Jose Luis Valenzuela is the artistic director of the Los Angeles Theater Center, an award-winning theater and film director and a tenured professor at the UCLA School of Theater, Film, and Television. For more than 25 years, Valenzuela has uh, directed critically acclaimed productions at major regional theaters, including the Los Angeles Theater Center, where he created the Latino Theater Lab in 1985, and the Mark Taper Forum, where he established the Latino Theater Initiative. We met at the uh, LA County Arts Commission's Town Hall meeting on equity and inclusion. I wanted to just sort of set this up a little bit, because I think some of this has to do with what we just talked about, mm-hmm. about building those future audiences. Um, and uh, that issue of equity and inclusion hangs over a lot of arts organizations and institutions, as you well know, but it also hangs over the entertainment industry. Yeah. Um, there's the, you know, the recent news that the uh, Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences invited 683 filmmakers and craftspeople to join. And uh, the LA Times uh, did a, an analysis that 41% of the new class is comprised of people of color, uh, which actually pumped the overall academy rate from 8% to 11%. <laughs> wow. Big, big jump. Big jump. Well, for them, that's a big jump. Uh, I couldn't find a breakdown on Latinos, but but uh, but I know that the this issue of equity and inclusion isn't going away. So my, my question is, do you look at both the... Uh, Arts Commission's uh, initiative, you look at AMPUS, and this is going on in a lot of places, um, against the backdrop of your experience, is this real progress or is it just a drop in the bucket? To me, it's... 8% a, to 11% is yeah, not great. I mean, I mean, it's a drop in the bucket, to be honest. You know, I've been the advisory board of the National Hispanic Media Coalition. And we meet every year, every six months, we need, meet with all the networks and the studios about the, per, the percentage of people that are employed by this organization, institution. And here's an example. I mean, I was meeting with NBC, for example, or one of them, I think it was NBC. And last year, they had 18 actors, Latino actors, in regular roles. And but that include telenovela by <laughs> you, you know that's a big number. Yeah, it's not a big number. Right. If you think about it, how many actors are on a network? But let's say eighteen right. is better than three. Right. It's usually where it is three or four. But now because the telenovela got canceled, so eleven of those actors are out. You know, so now. We went down to seven. And it's nothing on the pipeline for this year and the television series that are coming that are going to substitute those 11 acts. Is, is, is that a, pro, a, pro, a progress? It's not. And they give you the same excuse. They still give you the same excuse, you know, which is we only cast the most talented people. <laughs> We don't think, we can't think about race or color. Right. We're only looking for the talent, which is an, an excuse that's been given to us for 50 years. Yeah. You know? So it's not. And, 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 uh, it is disappointing. It's very disappointing to me. I think we actually had a bigger, a bigger percentage of Latino performers on television in the 50s. Well, that's not saying much. But it's not. But yeah. but but think yeah. about yeah, you know. But you see, this is what. Um, first of all, you know, I was uh, in Washington D.C. when the first version of the National uh, Hispanic Media, Media Coalition, Coalition got started, um, early seventies, um, and uh, you know, we talked about these issues in D.C. back in nineteen seventy two. Imagine it's, it's, um, it's 50 years ago. So, so, we're still fighting many of the same battles the same. about equity and inclusion. Um, and, I, and I go back to even the 60s when I was in New York and, um, you know, talking the same stuff. Um, but now it seems more magnified at the national level because of this heated political system, uh, thanks to uh, my best friend, uh, Mr. Trump. Um, <laughs> Do you share that perception that this has now just gotten so heated 
that, I mean, I, just a divide, and how can theater help create a dialogue that's transformational, or can it even, in the, in the middle of all of this? I think I, I actually think so. I I I, I was listening, uh, but you know, the country right now is such an, an in a painful moment of history and who we are. And, you know, everybody this morning on the radio is talking about how can we bring joy, how can we bring something right now when all these tragedies are happening. Yeah. I think theater does that. I really do. I think theater touches, and I don't say enlightens, but touches the soul of the human when you're in the presence of the experience in a totally different way, you know? Yeah. And it, 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 may be, it may be, it's a moment of joy that you collectively, collectively have with the community. And you may learn something about humanity. And this is the, I mean, the, the issue is theater, every time you go to the theater, I hope, you learn something about that specific group or that specific culture. You know? It's, 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 if you think about your own experiences in New York, and even in New York, you know, when, when the great New York, uh, the, the, the New York Cafe, the Poets, Pregones, Teatro Cuatro, the Chicanos, we didn't know New Yorkans. And then we discovered that we were so similar. Or Spanish was bad. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yes. We were much more American in our sensibility. We love American music. You know? We we mean in Latin jazz. What is it? If yes. it's not the it's Emerging. different than salsa. Right. It's different than salsa, right. you know. I mean yeah. it, it, and salsa actually comes out of Latin jazz. It's not the other right. way around. Yes. You, you know, in Latin jazz is because it's this fusion of the culture that moves it forward right. to another level. Right. And people people don't think about the beauty and the contributions, the contributions that these groups have done to the American culture. They never talk about, it's never that, and it's so important for young people to have that history because it's not new. It's been going on for 50, you know, yeah. It's, it's, as, as, a, as a community. But even here in L.A., this is what I found so interesting. So, you know, from New York, most of the Puerto Ricans who, and, and Dominicans and Caribbean folks came after World War II. Mm -hmm. But here in L.A., I've met people who tell me that they can trace their, their folks back several centuries right. when... Before California, California became Mex Mexico, I mean Mexico, before California became California, yeah. <laughs> it was Mexico, um, who can talk about um, even like 1800s, early 1900s, and people act like, oh, you guys just got right. here. And I just find that interesting that when you start talking to folks who can do that, and they talk about, it's not the other way around. We were here first. That's right. Our culture and our art is everywhere. That's right. And they talk about, um, um, oh my God, uh, La Plaza uh, downtown. Yeah. Which was Plaza Rivera. Which was, you know, that's how after LA began. Yeah. It's how LA began. Eleven families coming from Sinaloa right. and Sonora. Moving into this part, some of them were the black, African. black African, the African descent. They were Chinese, right? They were, you know, Spanish or whatever, and then Mexicans. The thing is, this is the big difference, yeah, to me. They were all Mexicans. Yeah. They were all Mexicans, and, and, and the idea is what America hasn't been able to put together. We all separated. You are as American, you are as American, and it's not more American than any American, in a way. You know, and this, and this, yeah, <laughs> and this is big discussion because, because the way we look or the way we, they, they're separated. Oh, you're Latino, 
you're African, you're Chinese, you're Asian, you're... No! There is three, four generations of people. Right now, you know, I mean, I'm so... Uh, I'm doing a play called The Mexican Trilogy, and it tracks a family for a hundred years, you know. But it, it, but it's not about the suffering and the, and the oh, I don't have a job. It, it's about the contributions that this family made and the participation at the American culture and how Ameri Americanization of this group happens, you know. I mean, come on, we were aware of Roosevelt, we were aware, in this part of the country at least, when JFK was, you know, we participated in that election right. in a big way because he was Catholic, <laughs> you know, and because we thought it was important to us. The night before he gets killed, JFK, was in Texas at LULAC, you know, it's convention. It convention is speaking to them, and and Jacqueline Kennedy was speaking to them in Spanish. The night before he died, and it's so important that people had no idea of uh, that we even existed. Right. You know, as a boring black, right. as a participants in the democratic process of the country, and they think we don't even know who the pro who's running. You, you know, they put us in a, in a level of ignorance and that that has to change, the perception of who we are. Well, part of that, too, is because of the media. Exactly. Because we, don't, we are not part of the um, national artistic and cultural tapestry. That's right. I mean, we are, but we're not. And we're very invisible. Um, and I, that's been, to me, now, this is a, a segue into, into uh, because one of the things I want to talk about in terms of the impact uh, on theater for people of color, I want, to, I want you to just talk a little bit about Hamilton and Lynn Manuel Miranda's, um, because suddenly, you know, um, <coughs> when you, I mean, I've not seen the play, but, you know, when you see what has, you know, all of a sudden, and I'm not just talking about what the audience is. I'm talking about, you know, every politician has decided that this is the best thing since whatever. Uh, tacos were, were uh, invented. And suddenly, they, 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 I think they're trying to absorb, like, wait a second, this is about Ham Alexander Hamilton, but wait, they're talking uh, hip-hop, rap, uh, wait, it's music. Oh, and then on top of that, it's like, who's George Washington? Mm -hmm. <laughs> who's Alexander Hamilton? Does that help us? Does that help raise the visibility of, of our role in the national conversation? Or is that just something that, you know what, that's a really nice thing that it happened, but it has nothing to do with all this other stuff? That's an important question, I mean, to me. It's very important. I, I have my my own dialogue with that, and thinking about uh, what transformation, if any, will that do. It's interesting because what he had done. I mean, I think he's brilliant. I mean, I, I love, you know, the, the the idea that he's able to shake, you know, Broadway and the way that he's doing it, and that he's so talented, and that he can do these things. I mean, great. It's not, 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 my, my dialogue has nothing to diminish the impact, the importance of the war. My dialogue is going to be transformative for the cultural dialogue in the country. That's, that's a big question for me, because, see, I was talking to another playwright, Jose MacArthur, Right, he goes. See, the well, you have to understand. If we take their narr narrative, they'll accept us. This particular playwright decided to do nothing but adaptation of Greek tragedies and the Latino version. And I say, why you keep? We have so many stories. He goes because if if I I had to get their narrative, it's the only way they can accept us. Now I'm a genius. <laughs> he, he told me this, yeah. you know. Because I took their narrative 
and I just put a Latino in it. But 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 it doesn't. It does. It's, it's, it I mean, at least that hasn't helped the dialogue. Yeah. You know, it doesn't help. He's been accepted. I mean, this other playwright, he's a genius. You know, but has pushed the narrative of who we are has allowed us to discuss who we are. So that's my only fear yeah. with Hamilton, that, you know, is the American narrative. Yeah, we're doing it with blacks and Latinos, and, you know what I mean? <laughs> but is still their narrative. Yes. That is a big question in my brain. So, so the, the, the question becomes, if this had been um, a play about Luis, <laughs> Jose Venezuela. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, think. Jose Luis yeah, excuse yeah. me. Um, you know, instead of Hamilton. There's no impact. I don't think we'll be accepted the same way. Because, I mean, and this is our job, your job, Luis, and my job, <laughs> is to change the narrative. Because, like you say, why are we excluded? Because we're not part of the mainstream. Right. right. And the dialogue. Because we're invisible in the cultural dialogue of American culture. Um, I want to kind of go back to end with the with going back to the first question um, about the impact on on youth, especially youth of color and theater, because I feel like this sort of keeps coming back to looking forward to the future and the narrative. Um, you know, going back, I mean, I've been watching TV since, I don't know, the 50s, mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't until probably the late 60s when I started to realize what's missing. Well, what's missing is I don't see... Puerto Ricans, even mm -hmm. when I went to go see uh, early 60s uh, West Side Story. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, is that, you know, we, we don't see ourselves as part of that fabric. I mean, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm about as American as you're going to get. I'm yeah, born yeah, and raised in yeah, New York, yeah. but I've lived in a lot of places. I have very and you grew up with the American culture from I'm yeah. I'm about as you know absorbed into it as possible. But I guess my question is, how do we, on the one hand, get young people, particularly Latinos, to think in terms of I'm Latino, but I'm American, and what does that mean being American? Because well, because for, you ask a lot of people, being American isn't being Latino. It does, that's that's yeah, no 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 no. I mean, that to me, that's it's, this is what culture is important to me, because we transform the culture. This culture that we're talking about, it's American because we're making it. There is no, I mean, there is no this this idea that. There is this other side of the American culture that we're not part of it. You know what I mean? We are contributing. Now that we recognize on the contributions, we're not. We are contributing to the everyday culture of American society. You know what I mean? Like, come on. I mean, to the, where everybody, everybody in the world is tacos. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay? Everybody in this country eats tacos. It's become ketchup, you know? Salsa, <laughs> Salsa to so cover yeah. ketchup. Okay? Now, that's part of the American culture. Now. Yeah. You, you know, that, 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 that it needs to be accepted, that it needs to be praised, and it needs to be talked about, that it needs to be, say, this is what America is. You know, Mike Davis, you know Mike Davis. The, uh, the writer. The writer, yes. You know, he has uh, The City of Quartz. Quartz, yes. Which is an important visionary book. 
to understand that that's America. Right. That this part of the world, I mean, I love this part of the world because it's the future. Because the future is global, see? The future is global. And nobody can adapt to globalization better than we can. Because we're not nationalistic in that way. Right. You, you know? You can switch. You can switch from going to the Puerto Rican community and talking to them about what it is and coming and going to the board meeting and, and switching your codes and, and your behavior and understanding that this is all a part of the American culture. And I think that's what's not being accepted. For somehow this idea that America is something that happened in the 1950s. <laughs> Make America great again. That's right. Make America, you know, that's what they're talking about. It's like, what do you mean? That was one little tiny moment in history. We have to understand that after World War II, it's the only time that capitalism <laughs> at its height. And it only lasted for around 12, 13 years. You know? And, and, and the country in itself, when I say, okay, that's great, but it's not who we are. And then we have the Cultural Revolution yes. in the 60s. Right. You know, because trying to understand its entrails and who we were. And, you know, it's, the Af it's when the African American came. You know, it's when, when the New Yorkers in New York got really strong. It's when people started speaking up. with the Chicano movement began and they say, no, 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 no. This is even then we started saying this is not America. You're giving us a version of America that is not real, and this has been going on for fifty years. It, it, they're tough. It's so important, and again, it's all about the narrative. It's so important for those in power. It's like apartheid to control the narrative yeah. in order to keep us where they feel we belong. Jose Luis Valenzuela, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us at uh, Radio Palacio, part of palaciomagazine.com. I hope we continue this conversation. Definitely, definitely.